Welcome to the 1965 movie, Ship of Fools, a classic Hollywood journey that's more than just a voyage. And as you dive into this cinematic sea, be prepared for a mix of funny, shocking, and sad facts that'll keep you hooked till the end. Ever wondered which classic Hollywood actor steals the show for you in this maritime tale? The ensemble cast ensures there's a favorite for everyone. Now, do you have a cherished memory linked to this movie? Maybe a lazy Sunday afternoon or a late night viewing that left a lasting impression? As we sail through this cinematic experience, we're curious to know about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Ship of Fools. Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. We would love to hear your take on this classic. Stay tuned for more insights into the film's nuances, and remember, the best stories often come from the audience. So, don't forget to share your Ship of Fools tales with us. Ship of Fools, a 1965 movie directed by Stanley Kramer, made a significant impact on its audience during its time and left a lasting legacy in popular culture. The film, based on Catherine Ann Porter's novel, was received with critical acclaim for its exploration of societal issues and nuanced character portrayals. Upon its release, the movie sparked discussions about human behavior and societal norms. It was praised for its thought-provoking narrative, addressing themes such as prejudice, isolation, and the complexities of human relationships. The ensemble cast, including notable actors like Vivian Lee and Simone Signoret, delivered compelling performances that resonated with viewers. The impact of this cinematic work extended beyond the silver screen, influencing popular culture in various ways. The TV movie prompted discussions on morality and social justice, leading to increased awareness and advocacy for marginalized communities. Its portrayal of characters from different walks of life left an indelible mark on the audience, challenging societal norms of the time. In the aftermath of its success, the film inspired several spin-offs, including literary adaptations and stage productions. The characters and themes explored in it became timeless, contributing to the creation of merchandise that allowed fans to connect with the story on a deeper level. Its legacy is evident in its continued relevance as subsequent generations revisit and appreciate the work for its timeless exploration of human nature. The enduring impact of this production is reflected in its cultural influence and the ongoing discussions it has sparked across various mediums. In conclusion, Ship of Fools, with its powerful narrative and memorable characters, left an enduring impact on popular culture. The movie's exploration of societal issues and its influence on subsequent adaptations and discussions solidified its place in the annals of cinematic history. It continues to resonate with audiences, proving its significance as a cultural touchstone. In the mid-20th century, the 1950s unfolded against the backdrop of significant cultural and historical shifts. This era, marked by the aftermath of World War II and the onset of the Cold War, witnessed the emergence of distinct sociopolitical dynamics. The United States, having experienced post-war economic prosperity, underwent transformative changes in lifestyle and values. Traditional gender roles persisted, but cracks appeared, foreshadowing the burgeoning civil rights movement that would redefine societal norms. The 1965 film directed by Stanley Kramer navigated this complex socio-historical landscape. Set against the backdrop of a transatlantic voyage, it encapsulated the microcosm of society aboard the ship, mirroring the macrocosm of the world outside. The characters, diverse in backgrounds and ideologies, embodied the tensions and conflicts of the era. The movie subtly addressed the racial tensions of the 1950s. With the civil rights movement gaining momentum, it depicted the racial prejudices embedded in society. The characters, confined within the ship's confines, served as metaphors for the limitations and constraints faced by marginalized communities in the larger societal framework. Furthermore, the specter of the Cold War influenced the narrative, with the ship becoming a metaphorical battleground for differing political ideologies. The passengers, representing various nations, mirrored the global power struggles, and their interactions reflected the ideological clashes that characterized the geopolitical landscape of the time. The conservative social norms of the 1950s also found expression in the film. The characters grappled with societal expectations and struggled against the constraints imposed by a conformist ethos. It explored themes of conformity, rebellion, and the quest for personal freedom within the confines of societal expectations. In conclusion, the film stands as a poignant reflection of the cultural and historical currents of the 1950s. 
Its characters, representative of diverse backgrounds and ideologies, serve as vessels for exploring the racial tensions, political conflicts, and societal expectations that define the era. Stanley Kramer's directorial lens skillfully captured the nuances of a society in flux, making it a compelling exploration of the human condition within the historical tapestry of the 1950s. Oscar Werner earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actor despite being fifth billed in the film. Michael Dunn, standing at 311, remains the only dwarf actor nominated for an Oscar, a record unchanged since 2016. The cast features four Oscar winners, Vivian Lee, Lee Marvin, Simone Signoret, and Jose Fur, alongside four nominees, Michael Dunn, Oscar Werner, Lilia Scala, and George Segal. Despite his lower billing, Oscar Werner's performance stood out, securing him an Oscar nod. Michael Dunn's nomination remains unique in the history of the Academy Awards due to his stature. The ensemble cast, comprising both Oscar winners and nominees, underlines the caliber of talent associated with the film. Vivian Lee, Lee Marvin, Simone Signoret, and Jose Ferrer bring their award-winning expertise to the screen. The inclusion of four nominees further attests to the film's strong cast, with Michael Dunn, Oscar Werner, Lilia Scala, and George Segal contributing to the film's overall impact. In conclusion, Ship of Fools from 1965 stands out not only for its narrative, but also for the remarkable performances that earned recognition in the prestigious realm of the Oscars. The diverse and accomplished cast adds depth to the cinematic experience, making the film a notable entry in the annals of film history. Director Stanley Kramer initially contemplated filming aboard a real ship, but logistical challenges led to the construction of a ship set at Columbia Studios. Spread across four sound stages with four levels, the set was dismantled into 44 sections, each measuring 16 x 12 feet and transported to Paramount Studios for special effects work. Vivian Lee, known for her roles in A Streetcar Named Desire and Gone with the Wind, faced personal struggles during the filming. Battling depression and alcoholism, she had a challenging relationship with co-star Lee Marvin, initially complaining about his alcohol breath. Surprisingly, the two later formed an unexpected friendship. The movie marked Lee's return to the big screen after almost 15 years, with her last films being The Deep Blue Sea and The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone. Despite her personal challenges, her performance added depth to the ensemble cast. In summary, the film, directed by Stanley Kramer, overcame filming challenges with a meticulously constructed ship set Despite tumultuous personal experiences, Lee's return to the screen contributed to the captivating ensemble dynamics. This information sheds light on the unique production process and interpersonal dynamics behind the project. Director Stanley Kramer employed a distinctive filming technique in Ship of Fools. Vivian Lee's portrayal, captured through a gentle soft focus, took a contrasting turn during the climactic Charleston sequence, where Kramer opted for a cold, unforgiving sharp focus. This deliberate choice in cinematography added depth to Lee's performance. On the other hand, author Catherine Ann Porter, the mind behind the novel adapted for the film, held a disdainful view. Porter strongly disliked the cinematic interpretation, considering it vulgar and shallow, a sentiment that offers insight into the subjective nature of film adaptations. Interestingly, Spencer Tracy, a frequent collaborator with director Stanley Kramer, maintained a regular presence on the set. Tracy, who featured in Kramer's previous works, such as Judgment at Nuremberg and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, visited regularly during the filming of Ship of Fools, illustrating a lasting professional relationship. These behind-the-scenes details contribute to the multifaceted nature of the film's production, showcasing Kramer's unique directorial choices, the author's perspective on the adaptation, and the camaraderie between the director and a seasoned actor. In a pivotal moment of Ship of Fools, the lead-up to Vivian Lee's Charleston remains a masterclass in synchronization. The soundtrack, expertly crafted by Ernest Gold, weaves a brash ragtime melody with melancholy strings blurring the lines between Lee's movement and the music. This meticulous scoring intensifies the scene, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. The movie subtly references the German federal election of 1933, a crucial event where the National Socialist German Workers' Party, also known as the Nazis, secured a significant 43.9% of the vote. This political shift marked a pivotal moment in history, illustrating the rise of the Nazis and their increasing influence. 
Lowenthal's mention of Kaiserin Victoria's funeral connects us to German royalty. Kaiserin Victoria, wife of Kaiser Friedrich Wilhelm and mother of Kaiser Wilhelm II, was the daughter of Queen Victoria of England. This historical reference adds depth to the narrative, intertwining the film's fictional elements with real-world events. Director Stanley Kramer's unique filming technique, particularly in Vivian Lee's portrayal, deserves recognition. The deliberate choice of a gentle soft focus and a contrasting sharp focus during the climactic Charleston sequence adds layers to Lee's performance. This directorial decision showcases Kramer's distinctive approach to storytelling through visuals. Despite initial challenges in production, including the construction of a ship set due to logistical issues, Kramer's vision prevailed. The film overcame hurdles, and Vivian Lee's return to the big screen after a 15-year hiatus brought a unique dynamic to the ensemble cast. Her performance, despite personal struggles, contributed significantly to the captivating dynamics on screen. Additionally, the film delves into the intricacies of adapting a novel for the big screen. Author Catherine Ann Porter's disdainful view on the cinematic interpretation offers a glimpse into the subjective nature of film adaptations. Spencer Tracy's regular presence on set, a testament to his lasting professional relationship with Kramer, adds another layer to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. In conclusion, Ship of Fools, with its nuanced scoring, historical references, unique filming techniques, and the interplay of real-world events with fiction, stands as a testament to Stanley Kramer's directorial prowess and the intricacies of cinematic storytelling. The film's ability to seamlessly blend various elements elevates it into the realm of impactful cinema.